As countries around Southeast Asia struggle to cope with growing piles of plastic and other waste on land and in their waters, this one country in the region appeared to have things figured out. Singapore is a city-state obsessed with clean roads, recycling, and the recovery of waste, which it reuses whenever it can. One of the most striking examples is the use of surplus ashes from incinerating non-recyclable waste to reduce its importation of sand in the land recovery policy, although, for obvious reasons, it is trying to minimize this incineration. During the 20th century, Singapore was a notably underdeveloped city-state, a classification that still remained until a long while after its independence from Malaysia in 1965. Basically, Singapore had two major problems. Pollution on its streets, which were dirty, creating the ideal climate for infestations of rodents and insects, the perfect breeding ground for diseases. Industrial pollution, leading the World Health Organization to declare it a polluted area in 1967. Water bodies were polluted and deforestation was unacceptable. Keep your city like a bin, put your litter in the bin. Stop disease this simple way, think about it, start today. In 1968, President Lee Kuan Yew began the campaign Keep Singapore Clean by imposing fines on those who dirtied the city. Suddenly, the streets were clean, proving that the country's street problem was not due to its high urban density, but rather due to lack of education. Despite the major cleaning operations in the city-state aimed at improving urban life, Singapore could not resolve its forest problem. From 1819 to 1980, it lost 95% of its vegetation cover, and between that date and 2014, it destroyed 90% of its forests, killing off bird and plant species. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, there are no natural forests remaining on the island. What it has managed to do is recirculate a considerable part of the industrialized waste it manages, thus becoming a recycling experts. In 2012, the Singapore Green Plan led to a revolution in waste management, reducing waste that was not recoverable to a minimum, and reusing the rest. In Singapore, everything that can be recycled is recycled. Inorganic waste is made into new materials used in industries such as the construction industry or as a base for reclaiming land. Organic waste is processed to extract biofuel and heat. Mud and fats are used in different industries, including the energy industry for incineration, and waste from the construction industry is used to build or reclaim land from the sea. Although, part of the waste is incinerated or used to extend the land and is not particularly sustainable, it leads the way in the reduction of waste in landfills, the curse of a broken global waste system that has enormous environmental impacts. In Singapore, about 930 million of plastic waste is discarded every year, with 96% of them being non-recyclable. Almost all of Singapore's non-recyclable waste is incinerated, with the ash and some solid waste shipped to a man-made island nearby that doubles as a nature reserve. But that solution looks as if it is running short on time. According to Environment Ministry documents, the tip on Semaka Island was supposed to meet Singapore's dumping needs until as late as 2045. But with the use of disposable products growing at a rapid rate, the ministry's most recent estimates show that Semica could be full a decade earlier. According to data from the NEA, plastics were the largest category of waste disposed of in Singapore is about 763,400 tons, and only 6% of the 815,200 of plastic waste generated was recycled, and the plastic waste per capita has increased nearly 20% over the last 15 years. So far, the government has not adopted complete bans on plastic bags but measurements are being taken, but it is only helping up to a certain extent. It has also not disclosed any plans to replace the Seneca dump. However, the recycling initiatives have helped stabilize the amount of trash sent for incineration, despite increases in waste generation caused by population and economic growth.
Southeast Asia is home to four of the world's top marine plastic polluters, a trend some think will worsen by the waste import ban in China, which used to be the world's top destination for recyclable trash. The deaths of pilot whales in Thailand, with pieces of plastic rubbish in its stomach, has also drawn global attention to the problem. But climate groups have urged the government of the wealthy city-state, which enjoys broad support from its electorate, to spend more political capital on tackling waste in a convenience culture where deliveries and takeout meals are common. Singapore says it aims to become a zero-waste nation, meaning it will eventually not send any waste to landfill. However, it has yet to set a date for achieving that goal. The NEA said it was implementing initiatives aimed at increasing recycling rates and reducing waste at the source. These include increasing the number of recycling bins and awareness campaigns. And Singapore is also offering research grants for companies and organizations to develop sustainable waste management technologies and has planned to make it mandatory for large generators of packaging waste to report the types and quantities they use and their reduction plans. However, the country does not face the land and water pollution issues that plague other major countries and plastic bags are necessary for responsible and hygienic bagging of waste in Singapore's hot and humid climate. Hence, it cannot be completely banned. From July 3 this year, customers will have to pay at least 5 cents for each plastic bag that they take from large supermarket operators. That's one point scored for environmentalism and minus one for grumbling customers. or two-thirds of all supermarkets in Singapore will impose the charge which applies to disposable carrier bags of all materials. This charge will not apply to non-carrier bags such as flat-top plastic bags for fresh produce, meat or seafood. It is encouraging that Singapore is taking more steps to cut waste, but if going green is the goal, then making plastic bags costlier may not be a strong deterrent for consumers. As still the waste is dumped in the island, an alternative solution needs to be found to replace it because, by the passing years there will no longer be any more space left in the island, and the government needs to address the problem before that happens, 